hi guys welcome back to the channel mark here and today i'm back with another video and um simply today i just wanted to talk about how to fetch data using the axios node package now there are several types of fetching data um from any api but um one that i found really interesting recently was the axios um node package and um, the way it fetches data is simply straightforward and less confusing i get a lot of messages from my friends and you guys that um, um it's kind of confusing to use the fetch api to you know get your data from an api now before we move forward um, um i just want to request you to um, smash the like button and subscribe comment and let me know what you think about the using uh, the fetch api and whether you've tried the axios api um, axios package before and which one do you feel that is quite simpler and straightforward now today uh we're gonna talk about you we're gonna use the board api and this is really an interesting um api that um what it does when you go to the endpoint activity um it simply gives you uh, something to do whenever you're bored so you can um see that whenever you submit that you get a different um to do so um let's let's um get into the video and uh, figure out how we can fetch data from this so we can integrate this into our own um project now i'm gonna simply copy this um because i'm gonna need this url now I simply have an index.js file. You can you can create a folder on your machine and uh, simply just create an index.js file. Now the first thing that we're gonna do in order to access the Axios API is to instantiate the Axios package. And how we do that is that uh, get um, data from okay um, um what did i i want to create a uri here and all i'm doing right now is to um just variable sometimes you can't is to name our function we're going to give it the name get activity and then in here is whatever that we intend to return okay so now this, the code block in here is going to be what we need to be returned now one thing that you need to know that whenever you're getting data from an api is that you simply need to make a promise all right so now this is the basic way of writing a function in javascript but if you want to get a deeper understanding on how to write functions in javascript i have a really nice video that really talks about functions in javascript now let's go back to this now one thing that i wanted to let you know that when you're making function when you're making um api calls is that you're simply making a promise and now that promise can either be fulfilled or it can not return anything now when you're making promises you need to use keyword all right which means a synchronous that this function is going to be asynchronous and now you can create a local variable response if i could spell that response equal is equal to now um before um vs code suggests anything now here we're gonna use our variable axios okay dot now this is where we get access to the methods in the axios api now we're going to use the get method right and then in here is where we're going to write our uri all right now since this is an asynchronous function we need 
to let it know that in case anything fails, it needs to wait until everything is fetched from this URI and then data will be um, you know, assigned to the response variable. Now what we do is npm install the error message. Okay. So now if we let's check if everything runs, everything runs out perfect. Now for any reason, if there's an error, let's say you do not have the right um, authentication, right? Or let's say there's an error in this URL. So let's see what returns back. Okay, um, we need to clear this up so that we we get only results that we need. Okay, so now that you can see where our error should be written somewhere. Endpoint not found. Okay, so this is our message. So now um, if we clear this up, and then see. So you see that we can get our message, okay, which is pretty impressive. All right. So but then if we fix this. Okay, now we can get all our results. Okay, so now we can move forward to writing an arrow function because as you saw earlier on when you're writing these functions it's very easy to forget um to call the function so now let's say an arrow function okay now remember we are breaking the same function earlier and we are writing an anonymous function now the next thing since it's an anonymous function we don't need the word function see so now it is literally the same thing but getting rid of this and then letting it because remember when you write a function and when whatever happens after here is being returned by that function so now instead of to tell the function that this is what is being returned you use the arrow um, we have kind of like cleared a few things about the arrow function. So now we have sort of cleared or modified our function to be an arrow function. But let me tell you something. If we try to run this, we are not going to get anything. Okay. So now, this is what we are going to do. When you're using Axios, it kind of kind of changes the way you would call this data. So you can see that now we can get not get the, the data. So what we're going to do in this case is because um, is, is to modify this a little bit more. Why? Because now APIs or Axios in particular has a different way of handling its own exceptions. Okay, so now what we can do, okay, what we can do is to modify this a little bit more. Okay, and what in this case, instead of using the await, um, we can we can get um, let me just rewrite this um, so now this time round you can say axios request okay dot get right so now we need the URL so this is API URL okay so now in this case this is how the data is gonna be handled okay so we're gonna say that 
dot then all right now whatever that goes in here is another arrow function okay so you can use a simplified function straight up function like the one we wrote earlier whereby you use the keyword function but i'm gonna show you the professional and advanced way of writing an another function in here so now we're gonna see um the response okay the response so literally what we're doing in here in here is that we are getting the url okay the um the data from the uh, sorry we are getting the url all right and now whatever that url is responding is now assigned into a parameter so normally you would write this as plus then the error message okay so let's go through really what is going on here this is the import all right and the import is getting the endpoint beautiful enough that vs code can highlight whatever is going on and that api has data in it so whatever that is returned by that endpoint is now or literally what we're saying is that get the url and then after you're getting that url that data assign it to a parameter and now we have access to that data so to print it out in a json format we can say respond dot data okay now you may ask yourself where is dot data um what is this so now this essentially what we're trying to do here is that we're saying whatever list that is whatever data that is returned from the endpoint format it in a data format okay you can go deeper in this and look it up and see why this is written like so but to give you a you know a, some information about it is that you can write the parameter dot data and essentially what you're saying is that whatever that is returned just give me that actual data because this is a list all right when you take a look at how map is res, um is written okay you can see how you know you can loop through a list using the map function so you will see things that kind of look like dot json like methods uh, methods that are like dot json if you want to get a deeper understanding about how this comes about please go ahead and comment down below and i will definitely take a look at creating another video that really look looks and talks about looping through um json objects and all that information will be provided on here but now let's go ahead because we can um okay now we have an error somewhere because we call in this initial function so let's go away with that and i believe there is a temp code that has been written so we can delete that and then return our function so now you can see that axios has its own way of handling synchronous functions that is sort of different from how we initially tried to call um the function so now when you when you write an arrow function you can simply 
when you take advantage of the arrow functions, you can simply call data like this. But when you write a straight up function, you would definitely use the try catch block and that will um, sort of make everything simpler for you. So if you found this easier to understand or the initial way of calling APIs into your application, please comment down in the video below and let me know where you may have not understood so I can simply reply back to you and let you know and also you can you can also like reach out to us on uh, twitter elite by code and instagram elite by code so that way um, you can get instant feedback right so i hope you if you feel you enjoy this video please smash the like button comment down below and subscribe because we are working on a big project that you will definitely like to be part of. So now we are, the reason as why I'm teaching you all this, or I'm showing you how to work around all these APIs. And earlier on last, the last week, we uploaded a video about using state in React. The reason as why I'm sharing all this is that it's going to be a fundamental process. It's going to be a step towards building a full stack application. And if you understand all this, then the rest in that long video that, that is coming through the lesson, it will make more sense because you know the foundations of everything. So right now, allow me to say bye-bye and see you in the next video. Bye-bye.